Talk about the Let's cats. dive into the uh, the game itself yeah. after a quick word from FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. You can bet on everything on FanDuel. NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, you name it. FanDuel has odds for it. And right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if that first $5 bet wins. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets just visit fanduel.com slash ucss to join today never waste a hunch make every moment more with fanduel an official sportsbook partner of the nfl so the Cavs beat the yeah. bulls last night bro. yeah it's 12 funny. and 0 Go and ahead. they are just want to mention one thing then take it away kenny atkinson's a mad scientist and right now he can do no wrong the floor is yeah, I mean, they didn't even really play. I didn't even think they played particularly well last night for the most part. It was a weird game because they won. Yes. They didn't play a particularly good game. But they've gotten to the point now where they're so good that even when they don't play that well, they're able to win, especially against a bad team. It's because there's so many different con- contri- contributors. And because Mike didn't shave his beard. Why that, too. That's yeah. the biggest reason. But, you know, I always like the fact that the Cavs do it in so many different ways. You know, there's games where – they're, they're swinging the ball around to each other, getting the best shot available. But then there's games where Darius goes off. There's a game where Donovan goes off. You know, it, I like the fact that they're able to do that. Last night, you know, the bench, I like, like everybody on the bench had like 12 points or something like that. It was crazy. Yeah, you got yeah. like three people off the bench scoring a lot of double-digit figures and things like that. So it's just so many different ways that you have to – like they really test your roster – this is like the first time I've seen a team yeah. test the full roster. Like, everybody has a great starting five, but you need some people to come off the bench. And everybody that comes off the bench for the Cavs does well. Yeah. I mean, and, there's nobody that's like, you're like, oh, that, why are they yeah, playing Yeah, like, him? anybody on any given night can give you something. Yeah. And, like, that's to me, is what's making this, this Cavs team so scary, is yeah. that they getting so many contributions from everybody. You got your, your main guys – even though I don't know what the heck going on with Jared. But you got your main guys with Evan, Darius, and, D- and Donovan. Like, they're going to do their thing. But then, even if they're not working and something's not clicking, you could get a Ty Jerome comes in yeah. and, boom, he sparks something. You know, stuff like that. So, I think that's what's making this Cavs team so special and so hard to beat. And, JB, you held us back for three years. You know what's funny is – Two years ago, they went into the playoffs against the Knicks, and you didn't even like their starting lineup. Like, there were guys in the starting lineup be like, oh, this guy can't play. Now, everybody that plays for the Cavs, or at least plays, you know, decent minutes, which is the entire starting lineup plus, like, five guys off the bench, none of them are playing poorly. Like, I'm not saying everybody has a great game every now. Like, Sam Merrill didn't play particularly well yesterday. No, he went over But, five. like, overall, they're all playing – to this point in the season, at least what you thought, if not better. There's nobody on this team playing worse than you thought they would play. You know, nobody. I had a thought as I was driving up here, and I'm going to let you go. No, you got it. <laughs> you got it. I'm going to let you go because I, th- I thought about this. <laughs> hey, for the 9-9s and the 2000s. 2000. Anyways, you know how Darius said, like, last year he lost his joy for basketball, mm-hmm. and we saw how he played. I wonder if that was a JB thing, you know, because it seems like a lot of people weren't having that much fun, and it was just like not – it started off with a ton of excitement, and as the season went on, you know, that excitement started to die down. I wonder if because they made a change and Kenny Atkinson comes in here and does these things and changes things, how they look at basketball, how they're playing, is that why everybody's having fun? Is that why you're getting this production from the bench players? You know, is it the system that he put in so it's like everybody can eat in this system to where, you know, we obviously we criticize JB a lot about him not running no plays or no nothing. It was just Donovan do whatever and pick and rolls and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I wonder if the fact that you got this offense that's a moving parts where guys is in motion, guys setting picks, guys is hitting backdoor cuts and stuff like that. I wonder – if that having that type of success and seeing it like that is what's keeping everybody interested, what's getting everybody to come in and be productive off the bench to where JB, it was like 
figure it out. Like, you got your own stuff. Not, mm. And no disrespect to JB, but y'all know what I'm saying. I mean, you just spent the last five minutes disrespecting Much him, disrespect. I didn't do, it ain't no disrespect. <laughs> I mean, you did. No, just, JB did Which a lot. Fine, like, but. JB did a lot. He helped groom a young Cavs team, teach them how to play defense, how to play hard, got them to the, got them to the playoffs, got them through the play-in to the playoffs, to the next round. So he did some really pro- some positive things here. So it's no knock on him. I got no hate for JB, but I'm just saying. It yeah. looks it it ain't it's not ironic that things look completely different and we do owe the Cavs organization an apology because we all said it was a lot of major changes that needed to be had and they said it was just a coach and right now they look right. See, I'm gonna tell you this. People should look at this situation and and understand that coaching matters. It's way too often that we say, Well, what is the coach supposed to do? We can't sh- the coach can't shoot for him. The coach can't hustle for him. The coach didn't. The coach didn't drop the football. Listen, if you if that's your your ideal about what a coach is, you shouldn't have a coach. Then you should let people be player coaches like Bill Russell used to be. When you look at what JB Bickerstaff was doing last year, and people say, "Well, they didn't make any major changes." Yes, they did. Sure, the heck they did. <laughs> they got they got this dude Bless out you. of here hey, that didn't have a rotation, don't know anything about no offense. And here's the problem with this: when you are, have you ever worked? For a, 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 a boss that you knew more than? Uh, pretty much every boss, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when, when, so here's the problem. When you work through the... When you work, <laughs> as we just skip over that, we just... We just I, I didn't I, say you it. You just let him have it. That's I mean, the See, that's what I say. You got to aim. Yeah. You got to acknowledge, ignore, and then move on. <laughs> right? Like, you aim them in the direction you want to go in, Right. Shout out to A. Steve, Steve, uh, E.D. Steve is uh, pissed oh, right now. E.P. Hey, Steve. man, I didn't say it, man. Listen, give no. me his money. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that in my account. See, I didn't say nothing. But here's what we're going to say, though. When you when you working for somebody and you have ideas and, and, and you know how things work and you have a track record of success and then you got somebody consistently telling you certain things that you know ain't going to work, it becomes a toxic situ- situation because now it's borderline on, nah, I'm just going to run what I want to run. Or, nah, we out here losing. This your, your program obviously doesn't work. Go back to when LeBron James, when, when David Blatt was drawing up out-of-bounds plays for, for who did he draw up a play for? Like, I, it was somebody other than LeBron. And LeBron and, said, nah, and he was like, not a chance. N- not a chance, buddy. Like, I believe in this subordination. Abort- Right, <laughs> and, and and what is it? What is it? Uh, what is it called? A crimson? What, what, Denzel Washington was in Crimson there. Tide. Crimson Tide. Yeah, I do not concur. Yeah, I do not concur. That's right. Section Gene two Hackman. point. Section two point three five. <laughs> put him in lockup. Yeah, like I don't. I, I screwed that up, but you get it. So <laughs> good not, movie. A great movie. By by the way, they was jousting back and forth. But my thing about the situation is this: coaching matters. You should learn about that. In football, you should learn about that. In baseball, who you have calling the shots means something. And by the way, I will apologize. And I'm not going to apologize for telling them that they should have been playing better because that, that is a catalyst for them playing better this year. They knew they knew what type of time That's they were right. going. That's right. Like, and, and now they came with their A game. People worked in the offseason. They made a change that coach. But we sitting here now, and Mikey McNuggets, I saw a stat somewhere while I was at home. Mm. And they said, not only do the Cavs have one of the best offenses that they've ever had in history of their team and one of the best starts ever, right now, as, as constituted, they are running the most effective, efficient, highest rated offense in the history of basketball through 12 games. Now, for us to be in Cleveland. You're saying the history of basketball? History, all of them. That's the Jordans, that's the Birds, that's the Magics. So for me, I, I believe in stripping all medals and rights for the Cleveland Brown and giving all those medals and rights to the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Kool-Aid Mafia has switched all the way over. <laughs> we've, we've left the cellar dry in, in Berea. We've left the cellar dry. There's no more Kool-Aid. I mean, to be fair, it should have gone straight from the Guardians it, to the Cavs. It should. It should. Yeah. It should. But we, we was late on that. Yeah. The, the Kool-Aid has now switched. It has now switched to the yeah. Cavaliers because they are on pace for not only a great team here, but yeah. all-time great right now, and they should be celebrated. I, I think... Can I just give a little context to the stat you mentioned? Yeah. So, not to poo-poo the stat at all, G, because mm. it has been incredible. Mm. Offensive ratings, the stat you're looking at, before last night, you were right. They had the highest offensive rating in the history of the NBA. Wow. After last night, they've dropped 
to second all time mm-hmm. behind the Celtics of last year. In the top one, two, three, in the top six teams of all time in offensive ratings ever, four from this year and two are from last year. Yeah, so it's so it's a, it, it's not. I, I don't yeah. I don't want to poo poo the stat because what they're doing is incredible. Yeah. Mm. The offensive ratings, advanced analytics with the threes and the pace and the spacing yeah. are all out of whack. The first highest offensive rating of all time that isn't in the last three years was the KD, Kyrie, James Harden. Brooklyn yeah, all right. From but, Mike, let me get to ago. some other, other things on this. First of all, what – there's been – how many teams have, won, have started 12-0 and 0 or better? Seven? They're the eighth team. They're the eighth. And five of the seven previously have made yeah. the NBA Finals. Were the other two teams that lost in the first round – uh, hold on, I'll pull up. You have that because I, I the, it, the, maybe I'm thinking the Mavericks and the well, Seattle that, there was Supersonics. Also, there was a Supersonics team, I believe, '94, maybe. And, so and here are the here are the eight teams yeah. in the history of the league that have started at least 12 and 0. Okay. So in 15, 16, the Warriors won 24 games All right, to yeah. start the season. That's yeah. wild. The Houston Rockets That's in '93, '94 with Hakeem Olajuwon. Yeah, they won the championship. 15 games to start yeah. the season. You got to go all the way back to 48, 49. Which doesn't really count. I don't even know what WSC stands for. The team abbreviation is WSC. I'm not quite sure what that know. is. So, them. In Washington, Washington Commanders. So, what about that Atlanta Hawks team that Washington the Cavs beat in, in the playoffs? <laughs> they did not no start idea. anywhere near that. The other okay. teams, real quick. Dallas in 2014, uh, 22, 2002, 2003. Yeah. Won 14. Boston in 57, 58, won 14. Yeah. The MJ Chicago Bulls, 96, 97, won 12. Seattle in 82, 83, run 12. And this year's Cavaliers team. Now, that Seattle like, team, they lost early, didn't they? Correct. Okay. So, like, all right. So, you know, you, you hope that the Cavs, this Cavs team is not that deep. The only thing I'll say in terms of, you know, ultimately Kenny Atkinson, he, as great as it's been, and right now he looks like as big an upgrade as you could have at coach, we still got to see what he does in the playoffs and how they are, how they go on, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, how they end up in the playoffs. Yes. WSC is the Washington Capitals. Why you all, just I was close. He was close. Why are you always doing this? <laughs> you always doing this. It's always hey, about the playoffs. No, but because it is, no? <laughs> yes. Listen, I, I'm all in right now, Tybus. <laughs> I am all in. I'm enjoying. I'm, I watched an entire Cavs Bulls game on a Monday night. Was okay? it? Okay. I'm all over in. over that Monday it, night football. Yeah, I didn't. I watched barely any of the Monday night football and, game. Put it on just during the commercials that's at his, halftime. And that's his catch up. He could have been watching catch up series. I could. I got to. So I'm all in. I'm not poo pooing <laughs> for once. I'm not poo pooing the regular season. I'm just saying to be fair. So let me ask to you. JB. They got to do it in the playoffs. Can I? Can we yeah. get? A, can we get you to tweet out the hashtag? Oh, uh, yeah, you won't tweet out hashtag I, let him know right I th- now. I still think let him know is do it. it has nothing <laughs> do to do it, with bro. the cap. It's just lame. <laughs> let him know it's lame. Well, I slightly, get, slightly hey, tease bull, my bull, cheese. Bull, bull, bull. Yeah. If we get 20 gifted memberships in um, today's show, will you tweet out hashtag let him know? I will, I will tweet out hashtag let him know. But I'll say that one other thing um, about. I a few more thoughts too. Uh, another thing about last night. So Ty Jerome right now, you mentioned him briefly. This is what this guy is doing is is absurd. Yeah, it is. I, I, mean, we was, I was actually in the text chain for five yeah. seconds. Yeah, I said, oh, <laughs> yeah, you were yeah. five minutes. Five. I said, yeah. oh, this Ty Jerome. Listen, I don't know how Earl. First of all, yeah, Earl, I don't, give Earl his flowers. I don't understand <laughs> how he picked this man out of a random lineup. It was like Ty Jerome. He just and he only had nothing to back him. He just be like, yeah, yeah, I like him. I never even heard of Ty Jerome before and last year. Was he, he won a national championship at Virginia. He was the best player on that I, UVA. I, okay, fine. I never heard of him. I didn't know who the hell he was. He didn't even know Virginia won the was championship. It? He, came he had like from a the, sprained ankle and missed the whole year. He came I mean, from the Warriors, right? Yeah. Correct. He was yeah. with Atkinson in Golden State. But is there a guy in the NBA <laughs> per minute playing better than this guy? So I, I, don't I know. actually tried to – so Jason and I are doing a cab show today, yeah. and we're going to focus a whole thing on Ty Jerome. Yeah. Because my favorite subplot of the NBA this season – Steve, take that video. I just You can just take it full. Yeah. Ty Jerome's become like one of the best defenders in basketball out of nowhere. Yeah. He's averaging 3.3 steals, steals for 36 Give me that. minutes whoa, whoa, whoa. in his career. Give me in that. his career. Hush. On a per 36-minute basis. He's averaging 3.3 this year. That's second in the NBA. Yeah. In his career on a per 36 
his previous high was yeah. one point six. Yeah, How is this happening? Who was ahead of him, by the way? Popped it out. Paul. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dyson on the, the Pelicans. Is averaging three what about seven. like assists Super. for thirty six minutes? He's got to be up there too, no? I'll, I'll, I, I close it out. Give me one second. Pull. I mean, this guy every time he's in there. So, so it's, it's crazy. Are you saying that right now he should be the front runner for six man of the year? Me and Earl got in that argument this morning. He's not close to that, but now, I saw thirty six minutes. Wait a minute, who who who? I'll, right? I'll tell you why he's not close guys. To I mean, we're not watching 36. other teams. We don't know what uh, his per thirty six minutes. Twenty two yeah. and a half points per game. Oh. Seven and a half assists. Four and a half rebounds. He's shooting sixty one percent from the floor and fifty four percent from three. Man, mm. Also shooting, by the way. Yeah. Eighty three from the line. With three and a half steals per game. I'm trying to think On of a first 36 minute basis, he's been one of the most well, effective, efficient players in basketball. But yeah. the reason. Well, the Warriors have the six man of the year, right? They have right two. Now? Buddy Hill I mean, and early, Kaminga you know. are both. The issue with him in terms of the six man of the year award, he only plays 18 minutes a game. He's but, averaging 10 points. But They're here's the thing, Mike. score way more. You know, there's some players, and we've talked about this before with the Browns, we've talked about this with guys with the Guardians before. There are some players that. Are, like, they're better at – like, Nick Chubb is better the more he plays, it feels like. There's a lot of – but there's other guys who are better the less they play. Yeah. You don't want to get them overexposed. Ty Jerome feels like that kind of player. Maybe that's unfair. I, I, but I feel like 18 minutes a night is good because he comes in with a ton of energy and he just lights it up. So, let me ask you this, McNuggets, because you know this answer. Knock on wood. Let's say Darius Garland got hurt and missed the – he rolled his ankle and missed the week. Would Ty Jerome become the starter or would they put Donovan at the one and run another dude? No, I think they put Ty at the starter. Okay. I mean, he's put, listen, the one thing with Ty right now, he's shooting 61 and 55%. When his numbers go back to what his career averages are around, or if they even they stay above that, but for his career, and I'm, I'm not trying to poo-poo, just giving you guys real How many games numbers. has he played, period, in the NBA? 171 before this? games. Okay, so he's so played two, like two, two seasons. More than two full seasons. Yeah, for his career, seasons. he's a 42% field goal shooter and a 33% three-point shooter. Mm. Now, so some guys get better. Obviously, his numbers I'm, are ridiculous. So, so my, my point is, if yeah. he's not – Ty Jerome's playing out of his effing mind. Right? But it's not just the shooting. <laughs> but it's Everything just, he does out there is good. Point, but if say he's he not did. shooting yeah. 50%, 60%, yeah. some of those shots and the floaters late in games that he's sure. taking, if they're not going in, you're like, do you really want Ty Jerome taking that when well, you have other guys on the court? But that, right but, now, yes. In yeah. the future, we don't know. But the, here's the thing, though, McNuggets. The reason that he is taking those shots and the offense is so effective is because – he is taking that shot. Like, if you pack the game and say, okay, we only want two people shooting at the end of the game, and that's, well, that's Donovan. Last, that's and, last year's team. And, 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 and so this year, <laughs> what, what kills you is this. When, like, when, when the Warriors say they play like we did, like they, they, they beat us like a drum, like we used to beat people. The Warriors didn't just beat you with Steph and Clay and them. It be dudes like Eagle Dollar. Sean Livingston. Livingston. Yeah, Livingston and awesome. killing us. And, and Barbosa. You're like, dog. The Brazilian <laughs> right. player. All we need is a stop right here. Barbosa. Put it in. They had, they had, Mo, they had Mo Buckets. Don't the you big guys, center coming on hitting Trey. Don't you guys <laughs> feel like whoever the Cavs put in there right now, you expect them to play well? Yes. yes. Right? Every player they put in there, what? I expect them to play well. Watch that game last night. They, Donovan Mitchell went off in the first, quarter, first, first half. He had 25. Mm -hmm. They come back in the third quarter. They down nine. Yeah. Atkinson just puts in all the just put just, let he me just five bench guys, five bench guys. <laughs> 19 7 run. I know and, 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 and led by Ty Jerome taking the ball from people swinging it around hitting jumpers and here's the thing that really got me too this just not offensively take a look at the people that are playing out of their minds defensively yeah Sam Merrill was a was a is a liability on paper. Yeah, yeah. You, he should be getting switched off the pick and roll and just <laughs> taken all the way down under the bucket yeah. and getting laid away. Yeah. But guess what? He's playing solid defense. <laughs> look, you look at Karis LeVert, who's playing good defense. Ty Jerome is taking the ball away from people, which is yeah. it's crazy because that was JB's whole thing. That was yeah. play hard. We are gonna play defense for eighty two games. Yeah. hard defense for eighty two games, and guys was gassed I in the playoffs, but. We thought they would take a step back with Kenny because they'd be so focused on offense, and that's yeah. not the case. No, Everybody stepped – like last year, the only guy we thought defensively, you had Jared and Evan, yeah. and you had Isaac Okoro. That right. was it. That was the only people that you thought was playing it, great defense. The team is playing with a confidence level like 100 out of 100. Higher. Right? I mean, Higher. they everybody believes in everybody, it seems. 
And and obviously Kenny Atkins deserves a ton of credit, but there's a lot of credit to go around. Donovan Mitchell, as the alpha on this team, has basically said, "I am gonna. My, I don't worry about what I got to do. The t- for the team to be better, I got to build everybody else up. Boy, hey, and a lot of superstars hey, will not do that. And he is." He is a great superstar and a great leader. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And but but and, and I mean you know Evan Mobley is a completely different ball player right now. Ooh, yeah, completely. He's completely different. It's like he it was like invasion of the body snatchers. <laughs> I, I don't know what's this guy. He he plays with no fear. He he kind of played offense. It was like he was soft for three years on it, offense. It's the beard. And now all of a sudden he's he's not afraid of anything. And, and because. And I hate to keep going back to back to the coaching, but a lot of what players do is based on what is what is expected of them and what what are you drawing up for them and what are you saying, this is why I need you to attack. If you got somebody who only tells you to sit under the basket and wait for the ball and get putbacks, that's, their, that's the type of the game they're going to work on. I remember my yeah. dad used to always tell me, I was big as I am today, like, and I was playing defensive tackle, right? And my dad was like, oh, no, nah, uh-uh. You ain't playing defensive tackle. I said, what you mean? He said, listen, you got one chance to make this correct. When you go from freshman to sophomore year, what I want you to do, <laughs> when they come out there and practice, you walk right over the defensive end pile. And I said, well, well, dad, what you mean? How am I going to walk over there? He said, you think the varsity coaches came to all the freshman games? They don't even know who you is. They don't know what you played last year. I said, you know what? You're right. Let me go to the defensive end. I had, I had dudes, my man Antonio Hall, he was playing defensive tackle. He said, G. Bush. He played tackle. You're supposed to be over there with us. What you doing? Nah, bro. I ain't here. I'm over on the outside. See, what my dad knew was, yeah, you, you got good size to be a defensive tackle. But if you want to play in college, you know how great that that's huge size. You can, he's like, you don't even got to be that good. You 6'5, 270 already in, in high school. That's, that's elite thing. size. Yeah. Okay. You you could be trash and, and, and make it. So, the, long story short, he was right. Like, it worked out. You and, was trash and, and I, made it? No, I was, <laughs> I, I was trash at first. But then, you know, it all just came together. But like Evan Mobley. When they telling him, nah, man, we don't, we don't wait for Darius Garland. Get that ball yeah. and go up to court. That's what we need you to do. Yeah. Then he worked on that in the offseason, and that's who he is now. Think about it. They playing like this in 12 games. What happens when they continue to play like that throughout yeah. the rest of the season? Yeah. Hey, Mike, I got a, 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 a question for you. Remember that dude that was trying to get the head coaching Cavs job? He was with Donovan in Utah. Johnny he's Bryant. on their coaching staff. He's, he's he the, is on the coaching staff. He's a top assistant. That's right. what yeah. I thought. I just looked yeah. at that and was like, is that dude? Is that the dude? Yeah. And he came John, from the, he was Johnny with the Bryant. Knicks last Johnny year. Bryant? Johnny Bryant. Yeah. He was with the Knicks last year? Correct. And he Dude, it's I mean like it, listen, it's so early in the season that you like you don't know if you can keep it up the whole way. I mean, you know, but it, like Pause. It's fun it, to <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I, it just you cannot have a better start to a season than they have. I mean, <laughs> there's wild. nothing not to like. And by the way, you know, I said the Bulls are a bad team. I don't think they're that awful. They're no, they're, 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 yeah, they, they got some like that. Kobe White's a good player. Uh, the sumo, but he, the, Kobe the White always, always gets us. He always plays hard against. I don't know how don't he plays why. with that big an afro. I don't understand how he can play. That's so much. Don't hair. he ponytail it up? He it? better not. No, never, he better not. Never go to jail, bro. That to leave that. Listen, they go, you cannot have all he that got, long hair. That is hard. crazy. He's got so much. Chair. That, hey, one last thing on Atkinson last night. Then we're going to talk about Darius Garland in the yeah. context of the Eastern Conference. For him to put out that all bench lineup last night, <laughs> yeah, when he did and have it work and spark a run. The dude's a mad scientist right now, and there are going to be times throughout the season <coughs> where he may put out a lineup that makes no sense on paper, and it may not work. Last night it worked to perfection. You have to kind of go through the growing pains of seeing, hey. Because he said after the game, we needed a spark. I needed to do something different that we hadn't done yet because our guys were flat. And you could tell yeah. playing 12 games in 20 days, yeah. a lot of the guys are tired. A lot of so, shots were short exactly. in the third so, quarter especially. Later in the season, if there's a game that they lose a random Tuesday night, I mean, they're going 82-0. and 0, So in the weird off situation, they do lose <laughs> a random game. Maybe that back-to-back in March against Phoenix and Sacramento we were talking sure. about. <laughs> and he throws out the all-bench lineup again, and it doesn't work. Like, let's have a little patience oh, and, not, and not kill him. Because you know people are going to jump on and jump down and be like, what are you doing, Kenny? Oh, Jay, Jay Crawford Jay, will be Jay's first on that list. <laughs> so I'm just, 
<laughs> you have to be patient in the regular yeah. season, try some things. Last night it worked to perfection, and that's why you have to – that's why you have to be like, okay, give a little here, give a little there. It's going to work some nights. It's not, but now you have confidence to go back to that lineup again in another game later in the season that you don't have unless you try it in the first place. I mean, I, you think about it. Like, their key players in the comeback were Ty Jerome, Niang, and Levert. Like, those were the guys, right, that really – What's the name? George yeah. Niang turned himself into Skinny Boo. I mean, he's, like, play, he's playing well. We haven't yeah. talked about him. As, as well <laughs> as Kenny's done with Evan and Darius and the Stars, I think you can make a, a case that the most Im- the most impressive coaching feat, he's got Karras playing, maybe as good as he's ever played. Ty Jerome has evolved into yeah. the best version of Ty Jerome. George Niang went from, we don't want him in the game, to he's now a crucial piece. Dean Wade, Sam yep. Mer- like all the bench contributors – have right. come in and played flawlessly, essentially. The and Struess hasn't even played yet. I yeah. mean, Give what are they going to need? Like, at the trade deadline, they don't have much to trade. But all right, what, do you, what do you get? An extra big guy for the bench? Like, what do you, what do you get? We here? got my boy Tristan Thompson. Yeah, they still need, still need some size. <laughs> still need some what size. You, oh, Tristan Thompson. They, they could use, where, what's his name, Morris again, where, right? Where, a guy like that. Where did he yeah. go? Uh, to the crib? No, he with somebody. No, uh, he where, signed. Golden State, signed, yeah. maybe? Marcus Moore signed. This is fun as hell. I haven't had this much. Because I was so. My my interest in NBA has gone over. Because I loved it when I was a kid. And over the years, it's gone nothing but down. Every year, every year, every year. Until this year. I I shouldn't say that. When LeBron was here, it was exciting and it was (laughs) fun. But besides LeBron being back here, it's mostly been like, who cares? But this is so much fun with this winning streak. Wait, t- wait till they play the Celtics. I think it's a lot Next of people. Tuesday, baby. A lot of people is waiting to see what it looks like. I know. I want them to be undefeated. Is going Chris, to that is game. Chris Knapp gonna be? Back? Is, is it at no. Boston? It's in Boston on TNT. No Porzingis, but it should still be a. Hey, Jalen Brown missed the last two games. Uh, Morris hasn't signed yet, by the way. He's still a free agent. Oh, he 